Well, according to Tesla, the first unsupervised full self-driving vehicles are going live in Austin within a matter of weeks. That may or may not happen, but just for the sake of entertaining if it does, I wanted to explore the pricing and logistics options to figure out when robo-taxis truly and really start to become cheaper than owning a car. But there's a lot more to it than just the numbers, but the numbers are kind of an important part of the equation. So let's start out with that. Mostly because the mindset Tesla has surrounding why robo taxis matter so much and why they think the future is going to be all autonomous driving is because they've said that it's going to be so cheap to operate these autonomous vehicles that don't have any steering wheel or pedals and just drive you wherever you want to go and you can summon them anywhere in the country from your mobile app their mindset is that's going to be what most people do in the future that's going to become the norm because it'll be far cheaper than owning a car and I take some issues with that theory but we were just comparing this to some average ballpark numbers, and of course this is an EV channel, so I'm going to compare it to Tesla's own numbers for the most part. Let's just say average price someone pays for a car up front around $45,000. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, but we're going for kind of middle of the line average operating expenses here. So we start out with forty five dollars then you bring in insurance over the life of the vehicle. Most people on average hold on to a car for about eight years. Some insurance is less, some insurance is more. I kind of went through and found the middle ground and estimated eight years of insurance at 150 bucks a month. Again, on average, it probably goes up over time, but some people are probably paying a lot less than that. And you'll see the total is a little over $14,000 in insurance costs over the life of the car. Then factor in registration. This also varies wildly depending on the state, so I went somewhere in the middle. Around $500 a year comes out to around $4,000 just in registration registration costs. And then of course you gotta charge this thing. Most people can't charge their EVs for free and the average American drives around 1200 miles a month. So if we factor in some DC fast charging is going to be more expensive and some home charging is going to be cheaper. I went with an estimated average. This might seem a little high to you but I'm estimating a ballpark average of 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Again over the life of the car electricity probably going to be more expensive over the course of eight years. And then lastly even with an EV there are still maintenance costs like there's buying new tires or rotating tires buy new cabin air filters some people will have to replace windshields as they crack and some people might just have general wear and tear on the vehicle over time that they have to pay to maintain i put that on an average of around 400 dollars a year which equals out to around 3200 dollars worth of maintenance over the life of the vehicle again eight years once you add all of those numbers up you'll get a little bit over seventy four thousand dollars over the course of eight years and that's assuming you paid cash for the vehicle that does not factor in any potential interest payments and now you'll start to see why i care so much about energy efficiency in evs and why i'm such a big fan of apteras it's like yeah the longer you own that thing the more it's just charging itself for free the cheaper it is in the long run but if i get started on the aptera cost savings i might not ever stop so i'm just gonna end it there and save that for a different video but let's just say in a hypothetical scenario where robo taxis exist they're reliable they're everywhere and every mile you need to drive you can just summon a car and it shows up in your driveway and takes you wherever you want to go well assuming you're driving around 1200 miles a month that roughly equates to about 115,000 miles over the course of eight years and now the math becomes much simpler we just have to figure out how do we get robo taxi costs to be under what that model y or model 3 was going to cost you around 74,000. and once you divide that amount by the number of miles miles you're driving, you'll probably come to a similar conclusion that I did, which is, again, a rough average based on a lot of variables that I'm sure are different depending on where you are in the world. Your registration is going to be different than mine. Your insurance is going to be different than mine. But again, a rough ballpark average is that robo taxis would need to be around 64 cents per mile in order to undercut the cost of ownership. Now, what is the current cost of ride sharing? Let's just say if you didn't feel like owning a car and you wanted to just pay for an Uber or a Lyft every everywhere you went. Well, presently, those are averaging around a buck and a half to two dollars per mile, and there's a lot of volatility with that because some people, of course, tip their drivers more than other people that might not tip at all, which is why, again, it's a range. It depends on supply and demand, and that's why Tesla's robo-taxis are probably also not going to have a fixed rate. Very similar to the price of electricity at superchargers, I think it will depend a lot on surge pricing and supply and demand. You know, if you're driving 
starting somewhere at 2 in the morning, that's probably gonna be a lot cheaper than if you're trying to get to work at 8 a.m. when the demand spike goes way, way up and there needs to be more vehicles available and they're all rushing to figure out who's available or who needs a ride right now. But Tesla is basically thinking that by making an ultra-efficient vehicle manufactured by them at Giga Texas and by not having to pay a driver and to not have to worry about tipping, they personally think that they can drastically reduce the price of these ride-sharing services and no longer be charging a buck and a half to two dollars a mile and instead be charging closer to 64 cents a mile or potentially even less depending on what they're able to manufacture these for which I think are likely going to be the cheapest Teslas ever made. Heck they don't even have to include a steering wheel and pedals anymore plus I'm sure they have a very basic motor it doesn't have to be fast anymore. No rare earth metals gonna have a 4680 structural battery pack. Very likely an iron based one in the future that doesn't have any nickel or cobalt. Not even a charge port anymore. These things are just supposed to charge over inductive chargers. So personally you know I think assuming the software is as reliable and as smooth as they're hoping, yes, it is technically possible for Tesla to probably get robo-taxi costs down to around 50 cents a mile, and that's when, over the life of the vehicle, it's just always going to be cheaper to take a robo-taxi than it is for you to own your own car. But I wouldn't just stop the video there and stop the discussion there, because I do actually think there's a lot of value in independent car ownership, and I don't feel like Tesla takes that into consideration most of the time. I mean, yes, I could very much see a world where a lot of people are using robo-taxis, especially in cities, it would be immensely helpful. But there's a lot of people that aren't living in major cities, and even the ones that do, I think, might appreciate some conveniences. For example, having an independent car means you get to decide with more control what you're paying for electricity and when you're leaving. Because very likely, there are situations in your life where you suddenly decide, you know what? I'm tired of watching TV. I want to go get something to eat. Or, oh, so-and-so wants to hang out. Let me just bum over to his house real quick. And there's a convenience there that your car is always parked in your garage or at your apartment and you can just step outside, get in your car and go whenever you feel like it within a matter of minutes. With a robo-taxi future, that might not always be the case. Depending on if there's a lot of demand or depending on if you live close to the place where they're all inductively charging themselves, you might have to wait 10 minutes before you can get into the car, even if you're ready to go. And if it's a really high demand time, it might be a 30 minute wait, depending on where you live and how far you are from where all the robo-taxis are hanging out. I don't know if Tesla's planning on just leaving them parked on the side of city streets or in empty parking lots, hoping that people nearby are going to hail them, but there's certainly a bit of unpredictability with our schedules, and that is a perk of an independent car, but that's more of a edge case example. A more very common one, especially for families, is when it comes down to car seats, especially if you have little ones. For one, a cyber cab, which is supposed to be the cheapest way of moving people around because it uses the least amount of energy in the vehicles, the cheapest to mass produce, that's not going to work if you're driving around with your baby or your toddler that still has to be in a car seat. So for one, you're going to have to hail probably a larger vehicle like a Model 3 or a Model Y. That's probably going to use more energy per mile and because it's a bit more of an edge case, Tesla is likely going to charge more for that if you hail one. And on top of that, is Tesla going to provide the car seats in every vehicle or are you going to have to put the car seat in the car every time you want to go somewhere? And I can tell you from experience that gets old really, really fast. So I could see a lot of people with families that don't like the idea of just being solely dependent on robo taxis. Maybe if it's just one or two people, they wouldn't mind hailing one, but anytime they got to go with their family somewhere, they're probably still going to want to have a family car that has their car seat that they're familiar with, that docks with their stroller that they're looking for. And that's just not something I see Tesla ever inherently providing. Just like every city having Teslas that are autonomous, but have car seats all ready to go and strollers in the back prepared for any family that feels like driving somewhere. Personally, yeah, no, I, I don't see that happening. And then, of course, there's also emergency situations. Like, if you find out maybe your kid's a bit older and they're feeling sick and they need to go to the hospital or they need to see a doctor, if you were like, oh, shoot, I need to stop what I'm doing right now, leave my house or leave work and go pick up my family member, go pick up my child, if you're waiting on a robo-taxi, that's going to be pretty frustrating. You can't just be like, like, oh shoot, I need to go pick them up right away. Let me hail a taxi. Oh, this is a high in demand time. You gotta wait 15 minutes for the cyber cab to come and get you. Yeah, I don't see that flying and I could see that getting really frustrating to people. Even if there's some kind of hurry mode, it's like there's a privilege and there's a massive convenience and dare I say need for a lot of people to be able to run out, get in their car and go sometimes when there's an emergency situation. And 
those kinds of situations have happened in my life and i can tell you from where i live i doubt there would be a bunch of robo taxis ready to go at any time i don't think tesla would be comfortable just leaving these things in people's driveways for the off chance that they might need it even if they did that they would probably end up charging you more for it so there's all kinds of scenarios like that where i can think of you know as cheap as robo taxis might be and as glad as i am that they may exist and help make transportation more affordable i don't think they'll necessarily replace the desire or the need for car ownership in today's day and age but maybe tesla doesn't care about that they just see it as an infinite money printer so they gotta pursue it regardless and they would rather be in the robo taxi business than the car sales business which you know given the profit margins i understand but while i've been somewhat skeptical and pessimistic on robo taxis in the past i will play in their favor to end on this video a bit and say there is actually some inherent advantages to a robo taxi approach versus independent car ownership even if it's more than 64 cents a kilowatt hour okay let's say tesla averages 80 or 90 cents a kilowatt hour and then we do the math and figure out okay over the course of eight years technically a robo taxi is a little bit more expensive well the difference is you didn't have to put down a massive down payment you know to get in a robo taxi and there are some perks to that you just ride in one as needed you know if you take a vacation and you're out of the country for a month you didn't have to pay insurance on your privately owned vehicle if you're just depending on robo taxis there's a cost advantage there and instead of putting you know ten thousand dollars down on a loan or five thousand dollars down on a lease or you know the pay in cash option forty thousand dollars up front instead you just pay a couple hundred bucks a month for whenever you need a robo taxi that means that with that extra thousands of dollars of cash you have saved because you didn't have to put it down as a upfront payment for an independently owned vehicle all of that extra cash now you can invest that you can put that in a high interest savings account you can put it in a high dividend mutual fund or you could mess around with the stock market and put it in a highly volatile stock that you think is going to grow over the long term and then you got to compare the gains of having all of that extra cash earlier and then you might figure out depending on how the stock market performs over eight years but you just put it in a high dividend mutual fund it very likely will increase over time not financial advice but that's just statistically what's been proven to be the case then even if you were paying 80 to 90 cents a mile on robo taxis it might actually still save you money because you got to invest all of that extra cash sitting around instead of putting it into a depreciating vehicle you know so as much as i personally love owning my own car and even in a world where robo taxis are everywhere and charging far less money than what you would pay for an uber or lyft today i still have to admit that there's likely a lot of cost advantages to a robo taxi simply because you don't have to pay for all of these annoying car ownership things right you don't have to pay for registration or insurance or charging just bundling all of that complexity of ownership into a single service where you just hop in a driverless car and you ride in it as needed there's a lot of advantages to that but i think the most likely scenario people use robo taxis when it's convenient but i still think a lot of people are probably going to hold on to their personally owned vehicles for those edge cases where they want the car seats to be available and they want the option to hop in the car and go if there's an emergency or they're feeling spontaneous and they don't feel like waiting around for a robo taxi to stop by their neighborhood but it'll be interesting to see if this works out you know waymo has been around for a while and they're expanding to more cities so it's clearly i think a technology that's gonna be around but i question if it's as profitable or as scalable as tesla is expecting and we've already seen people vandalize and attack personally owned teslas just imagine what people are gonna do when they see these things on the road and they're mad about elon that in itself might open a huge can of worms but i'm excited to hear your thoughts and crazy ideas down in the comments below what would you rather do would you rather still own your own personally owned vehicle that you can drive yourself or if it saved you a substantial amount of money over time would you be interested in not owning a car at all and just using robo taxis as needed drop all those thoughts down in the comments below and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again have an excellent rest of your day